I'm going to talk about image restoration. So image restoration has the goal of restoring or reconstructing the original image that has been degraded. And we assume we have some a priori knowledge of this degradation process. So unlike image enhancement, where the goal is to simply improve the appearance of an image in a subjective way, here we're actually trying to get back to the original image. So this is a um, often expressed as a objective process, such as we optimize some goodness criteria or least squared error rather than a uh, subjective criteria. And as we'll see, we'll model the degradation process by um, a function h, and then we add random noise. So this is a block diagram of this. f is the original image. h is our degradation function. Um, that degraded image is then corrupted further by adding noise, and that produces our degraded image g. So we take G and we attempt to restore it uh, using one of the methods described in this lecture. And we get back, hopefully, a approximated version of the original function F. So um, as we'll see, we'll describe a, a degradation as a convolution. So it would be a function H convolved with a function with the original image F, and then adding the random noise eta. And since uh, convolution in the spatial domain is equivalent to multiplication in the frequency domain. Um, you can also write this equation as the Fourier transform of the degraded image is the transform of the degradation function times the transform of the image plus the transform of the noise. Um, first we'll look at some noise models. And noise models can be characterized by their probability density function. So the Gaussian noise model is the most common. Um, it's it's probably um, the most it's one of the most easy um, models to to deal with mathematically. But it also has sound uh, justification uh, by the by the central limit theorem. If you add a bunch of independent uh, random variables together, regardless of their PDFs, those will uh, the sum will converge to the PDF of a Gaussian. So often you can argue that your resulting noise is actually a sum of some independent noise sources. Um, but we also see some other PDFs um, that may be useful for different applications. Um, for example, this Rayleigh noise models noise in radar and velocity images. The gamma or exponential functions model noise in laser images. Um, another common one is the uniform PDF, which is flat from uh, point A to point B. And this would be a good model for quantization noise. So if we digitize a value to an integer, our error is likely to be, I don't know, maybe minus 0.5 to plus 0.5, somewhere in that range, with equal probability. And the final noise we'll look at is the salt and pepper noise, or impulse noise. Here, we just have two spikes in the PDF, uh, one at A and one at B. And this would model malfunctioning pixels or timing errors. How do you estimate these noise parameters? So often you can do that by just knowing the sensor characteristics. You know, for example, do you have malfunctioning pixels, or is it a radar image, or something like that? Um, if you don't have that knowledge, though, you could take images of a flat surface that has a constant intensity, and then look at what the histogram actually is in that area. So if we take that image and add Gaussian noise to it, the three um, uh, modes here, uh, dark, medium, and light, are spread out into three Gaussian uh, modes, as you can see. Um, or we can add Rayleigh noise, in which case the distribution looks like Rayleigh, or gamma noise. Um, another example would be adding exponential noise or uniform noise, 
or salt and pepper noise. So by inspecting the histogram of your actual image in an area where you think the results should be constant, you can often estimate the probability distribution function of your uh, noise. So let's first look at degradation that is just due to noise. So remember I said that the general function is that we convolve a function h with f and then add noise. But let's just look at adding noise right now. So the, since the noise, noise is unknown, we can't just subtract it from g, but we can apply filters similar to what we did with the enhancement um, topics. So I'm going to look at a couple filters. Um, this is the arithmetic mean filter, which is just the standard box filter. Namely, we average all the pixels in a neighborhood. Um, and that produces a value that hopefully um, will reduce the magnitude of the noise. But a variant of this is the geometric mean filter. Instead of adding values, we multiply them and then take the root um, at the final value there. And this tends to lose less image detail. So just to see what this would look like for a um, uh, neighborhood composed of a 3 by 3 uh, set of values. All are tens except for one point is a 1. So in this case the arithmetic mean is the sum of all those values which is uh, 81. And then I divide by the total number of pixels which is 9. So I get the value 9. In the case um, of the geometric mean filter, I multiply all the values together. So I have 10 times 10 times 10 uh, times 1. So it's 10 to the 8th times 1. And then I um, divide, I take the root um, the, to the ninth root of that. So this um, is about uh, 7 point something, 7.2 I believe. So this is uh, an example of applying those two filters to an image that has been corrupted by um, Gaussian noise. So this is the original image, this is the noise, the image with the noise, this is the arithmetic mean filter, and this is the geometric mean filter. So the um, if you look very closely at that image, the um, uh, edges of the uh, regions, uh, step edges here, are less blurred in the result of the geometric mean filter than the arithmetic mean filter. Okay, another uh, class of filters to reduce noise would be order statistics. And these filters uh, sort or rank the values within their window. And and then it chooses um, something based on that sorted order. So for example, the median filter uh, takes all the pixels within a small region and neighborhood of the filter, sorts them from low to high, and takes the center, which is the median. So the advantage of this is the median value is unaffected by uh, outliers, so points that have a huge deviation either high or low because um, the value basically just ignores that. So in fact you can have almost up to 50 percent outliers and the median value is not affected. So this would, would be a very good filter as we'll see uh, in the case of salt and pepper noise which have a huge deviation from the correct value. Um, a compromise of this is something called the alpha trimmed mean filter. Here we sort the values again from low to high and then um, just take the central portion after we discard the lowest uh, d over 2 values and the highest d over 2 values. And then we take the average or the mean of that uh, center portion. So this has the advantages of the mean filter in terms of reducing noise but it is tolerant of outliers, um, which we discard um, at the tail here, although it's not 
50% uh, though it uh, can handle a smaller fraction of outliers. So this is a um, comparison of um, those filters on an image corrupted with um, uh, salt and pepper noise. This is the result of applying a median filter. Uh, this is another pass of the median filter and another pass of the median filter. So um, uh, subsequent passes do tend to reduce noise, although it tends to blur the image eventually. And this is um, a blow up of an area filtered by the uh, median filter here and the alpha trimmed mean filter here. Um, another filter that we'll look at is the adaptive mean filter. So the idea here is that we don't want to blur the image near boundaries. So let's say we have a step edge, a noisy step edge, which looks something like that. And what we would like is to filter this so that um, it reduces the noise, eliminates the noise or reduces it, but does not um, substantially blur that uh, step edge. Whereas a simple um, mean filter would, would blur the noise or get rid of the noise, but it would tend to... Um, blur the step edge like that. So we don't want to do that. So we don't want to reduce, blur the image near the boundaries. So how do you know if you're near a boundary? Basically what you can do is look at the local variance uh, sigma sub L squared um, in the neighborhood and compare that to your estimated noise variance sigma sub eta squared. So we know across the whole image what we think the noise should be. And then we look at our local noise to see if, if it's large compared to that. So if, a, um, if we're in this area away from the boundary, um, then the local variance is about equal to the noise variance. But if we happen to be straddling the boundary, then we have a very large local variance compared to the noise. So we can capture that in this function here. We take the, um, the corrupted image G and take the ratio uh, eta sub, sigma sub eta squared over sigma sub L squared times G minus M sub L. So M sub L here is the local mean. So in the case um, where we're away from boundaries, where these two sigmas are about equal, then this reduces to just the mean. So that's desirable because that's, uh, that will help reduce the noise there. But near the boundaries, um, this denominator is much larger than the numerator, so this term goes to zero. So we essentially just uh, produce the value itself without any filtering at all. So, so in other words, we don't reduce the, um, we don't blur the edge. So here's an example of uh, the image corrupted with Gaussian noise. Um, here is the result using just a straightforward mean filter and here is the result of the adaptive mean filter. So as you can see this is um, both are reducing noise pretty well but this one um, is much better in terms of leaving those step edges alone. And here is a blow up of two pieces of the uh, results. This is using again the mean filter and this is uh, using the adaptive mean filter.